Thing to one and all. Today we will give a last touch up and we will give a last brush up on the chapter photosynthesis. We will end up the chapter photosynthesis today. So, oh, we will start today's proceedings with end products of photosynthesis. So, what is the end products? Means what is the last products of photo photosynthesis? After photosynthesis, what are the products left out? Now, first of all, it is glucose. Now, what is glucose? The glucose is the starch molecules produced by the process of photosynthesis which is utilized by the plant and if not utilized it will be stored it will be stored in the plants now in what form we are taking that like let's say the apple tree is there the apple tree is producing apple now how the apple has come and or how the apple is having that sweet taste because of the presence of glucose any fruit tree any fruit tree producing fruit and having that high glucose concentration will give you a sweet taste and that glucose is coming from the process of photosynthesis. The starch which is not utilized will be stored in the plant and the starch which is utilized the moment it is produced those plant those <coughs> starch the moment it is utilized the plant will make it as a form of fruit. Those starch we can found we can find it in the form of fruit means if at all we are taking let's say apple tree or mango tree and uh, those ripe fruits are very much sweet why because of the presence of glucose in it now non fruit trees the trees those who are the trees which is not producing any kind of fruits those trees will manufacture less amount of starch only for the tissues and the tree to withstand so that the food should not be short the shortage of food shouldn't be there now next is water whatever the water is produced whatever the water is produced that water will be again used in the next part of photosynthesis or else in the next cycle of the photosynthesis so whatever the water is produced that water will be utilized properly next one is oxygen of course the main byproduct of the photosynthesis is oxygen so what happens here the moment the oxygen is produced the oxygen will be released in air and the other biotic components like animal the animal life will utilize that oxygen for their respiration and breathing purposes now so these three are the main byproducts or main end products of the process of photosynthesis glucose utilized by the plant for its growth for making up of fruits to make the fruit much sweeter water again utilized by the plant for the further process of photosynthesis oxygen byproduct released in the environment so that the animal life could sustain their life in the earth now significance of photosynthesis what is its importance the importance of photosynthesis is almost we can say a life needing process a life a process which is maintaining the life or a or our life is maintained by the process of photosynthesis how Photosynthesis is said to be as food for all. Food for all. Why? Because we know plants are only the autotrophs which can produce their own food. If there is no plants, no food. No proper food, then the herbivores, carnivores, they cannot sustain. Only plants can prepare its own food. Other organisms cannot prepare their own food. They can only make their food tastier like we human beings. We are taking the food from outside and we are cooking it. And we are, fine, we are saying that okay, we have made the food. No. The main autotrophs, main producers are plants only. So plant will make the food and that food will be utilized by the other organisms. Now, so significance of photosynthesis, it is providing food for all. Providing oxygen. Of course, oxygen is a byproduct, and that oxygen is sustaining the animal life, providing food, making their own food, and giving it to herbivores or the carnivores. Now, herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores all are directly or indirectly related to the plant for their food. They cannot prepare their own food. Only plant can prepare their food. So these two are the main important point. Apart from that, the plant is giving us through the by the help of photosynthesis. If photosynthesis will happen, the plant will grow. Plant will grow as a tree. It will give fruit, vegetables to us. That we are directly using it, consuming it. So that is the reason why it's a very important process. That is what the significance of photosynthesis. Now, adaptations in leaf for photosynthesis. What is adaptations? How the leaves are designed so that they can receive maximum amount of sunlight. That is called as adaptations. For example, the leaf are very much broad. So if leaf are broad, it's having a high surface area. 
more surface area or a highly surface area, it will receive more and more sunlight. More and more sunlight, automatically more food will be produced by the help of photosynthesis because sunlight is one of the requirement for the process of photosynthesis to sustain. Apart from that, whenever we are talking about the leaf adaptation we must also see the thinness of the leaf if the leaves are very much thin then photosynthesis will be higher and if the leaf is having thick cuticle then it will not allow more water to transpire but the photosynthesis rate will be moderate average neither very low nor very high this is how the leaves are adapted so the anatomy of leaf is a very important factor anatomy of leaf means how the leaf is distributed in the plant what is the structure of the leaf how the leaves look like whether it is broad or thin or thick it is highly depending upon the anatomy of leaf if the anatomy of leaf is if the leaf is broad or if the anatomy of leaf says the leaf is broad the leaf is thin then photosynthesis will be higher and if the anatomy of leaf says no the leaf is very much thick and it is not broad also it is having a less surface area then the photosynthesis rate will be less so this is what the about the adaptations now next factors affecting photosynthesis factors affecting photosynthesis so here there are two kinds of factors external factors and internal factors external factor is light co2 temperature water now coming about light if the intensity of light is less photosynthesis is less if the intensity of light is more photosynthesis is more if the intensity of light is beyond the limit that time it can cause damage to the photosynthesis process as well as it will damage it will cause damage to the chlorophyll also present in the plant now if the chlorophyll is damaged automatically the photosynthesis process will be hampered and if the process of photosynthesis is hampered the plant will not be able to make more and more food for itself so this is what light neither more nor very much less if very less no photosynthesis if very much high chlorophyll destroyed no photosynthesis now next is co2 carbon dioxide when we are talking about CO2 concentration, we was having a feeling that since CO2 is one of the primary requirement of the process of photosynthesis, so basically if at all more CO2 means more photosynthesis, no, not at all. CO2 is a toxic gas, so if it will increase beyond a limit, beyond a limit, if at all it will increase, then it will cause damage to the leaf of the plant, the chlorophyll will be destroyed. Now, here comes one question. In English one proverb is there, excess everything is bad. If light is also very much more, photosynthesis the process is disturbed or hampered. If CO2 is also very much high, then photosynthesis is also disturbed. So requirements must be like requirements. If requirements are more, then automatically the process will be slowed down or process will be ruptured in between. It won't be taking place anymore. Now, next is temperature. The best Temperature for photosynthesis to occur is between 30 to 37 degrees Celsius. Beyond 37 degrees Celsius, again the chlorophyll will start to damage and photosynthesis will be hampered or obstructed. Next is water. If the water content is less, photosynthesis is less. If the water content is more, photosynthesis is more. Now, if the water content is very much high, then plant will just store the water and in one side the plant will play a role for storing the water on the other hand the plant will play a role so that the water could be utilized for the process of photosynthesis means if the water is more than excess more than needed then automatically that that part of water will be stored and only few part of the water will be utilized for the process i think you have understood this now Internal factors, talking about internal factors. Next is anatomy of leaf. As I have discovered discussed, as I have discussed in the adaptation in leaf for photosynthesis. Similarly, here anatomy of leaf. How the leaf is distributed? What is the conditions of the leaf? Is the leaf tender one or young one or old one? That is also matters. So, what is the structure of the leaf? If the leaf is having a very broad surface area, receiving maximum sunlight photosynthesis occurring properly leaf is having a small surface area not receiving proper sunlight automatically the photosynthesis obstructed so this is the, what is about the anatomy of leaf amount of chlorophyll of course if a 
leaf let's say let's talk about a leaf that leaf is not having a proper amount of chlorophyll or else the chlorophyll is there but it has converted its shape due to its change in the orientation the chlorophyll has changed either into xanthophyll or the chlorophyll has changed either into xanthophyll a or xanthophyll b that time the photosynthesis will be obstructed you can find the big tree is there some trees are having yellowish leaves the same tree a very big tree tree is there, a very big tree is there the tree is having yellowish leaves. few leaves are yellow few leaves are green the leaves which are yellowish in color they are having the xanthophyll pigment those leaves will never go for photosynthesis or else if they are going also very less amount and after certain period of time that leaves will be detached from the plant and it will fall on the ground that's over means that leaf is dead now when we are talking about the green leaves the green leaves do contain chlorophyll and they are well enough to absorb the sun rays lights of the sunlight as well as it can go for the process of photosynthesis so similarly what happened if the amount of chlorophyll is proper then the things the process will be going on and if the amount of chlorophyll is not there in a proper amount that leaf will not show photosynthesis now so hope you can understand this now last one is age of leaf of course the tender leaf very thin photosynthesis is very high a young leaf thick one since the leaf is quite thick sunlight may not penetrate properly photosynthesis is quite less than the younger leaves old leaves has converted chlorophyll into xanthophyll yellowish in color almost a negligible rate of photosynthesis or very less rate of photosynthesis so i hope you can understand now next is the carbon cycle so carbon cycle talking about carbon cycle is one of the most important part of the photosynthesis why what is a cycle cycle means maintenance of something which we are taking from the nature and giving it back to the nature maintenance of certain thing which we are taking from the nature and after certain time we are giving it back to the nature that is what carbon cycle that is what cycle means the word cycle means taking it taking it again returning it back again taking it again returning like water cycle the formation of clouds how it takes place sun sun rays fallen on the water the water evaporates goes up forms cloud rain again water so a cycle is maintained okay so a cycle is maintained similarly how much carbon the living organisms are taking and how much carbon we are liberating so that the cycle could be in a balanced way that is known as carbon cycle how much carbon we are taking and how much carbon we are delivering now to understand carbon cycle two points we need to follow fixing of atmospheric carbon and return of fixed fixed carbon into atmosphere fixing of atmospheric carbon contains topic like photosynthesis carbon in animals fossil fuel lime rocks fixing of atmospheric carbon means how the carbon from environment comes to the living organism for example the process of photosynthesis plant is absorbing co2 convert it into, into food for example carbon in animals each and every living organisms is made up of carbon even in human beings animals plants you can plant body you can find carbon fossil fuels of course coal petrol and all how the fossil fuel forms when <clears throat> the living organisms after decaying and going under the earth going below the earth due to extra pressure it converts it they convert itself into fossil fuels into coal and petroleum so this fossil fuels and lime rocks lime rocks need to under, we need to understand about lime rocks what is this lime rocks under the ocean when we are finding the carbon dioxide rich water under the ocean we can find a level of water is there which is rich in carbon dioxide those water settle down itself into the ocean and finally they are absorbing carbon from outside also and they are converting themselves into lime rocks the process what i have said it is looking very easy but it is containing chain of reactions to follow it chain of reactions those carbon dioxide content water or carbon dioxide rich water find itself very much comfortable in the bed of the rock and being carbon dioxide rich it will again absorb some amount of carbon dioxide from the environment and it will convert itself into lime rocks so these are all the process photosynthesis carbon in animals fossil fuel lime rocks these are all the process that how we have gathered the carbon dioxide or carbon 
in any form from environment to the organism now when we are talking about return of fixed carbon into atmosphere how the carbon from the living organism has been returned into environment in the atmosphere respiration of course in respiration what happens the food burns to provide energy food burns in the presence of oxygen and liberates co2 co2 dissipates in the environment combustion of course combustion takes place in the form in the presence of oxygen and what is it what is it liberating what it is liberating co2 so co2 again liberated into the atmosphere decomposition what is decomposition when the living organisms they die small small microorganism they feeds upon and the carbon what is liberated will be again delivered into the atmosphere or environment food chain what happens in food chain we know plants are the producers herbivores eat plants herbivores itself eaten by the carnivores and omnivores eats everything but who is the main producer over here of course plants plants are the main producers so carbon is shifted from plants to the herbivores from herbivores to the carnivores now when the carbon is shifting in this way the carbon is going from one organism to the other and when finally the large organism dies those decomposers will eat the large organisms and the carbon again will be delivered into the atmosphere now weathering of rocks of course what is weathering of rocks the breaking of rocks due, due to severe temperature due to the fluctuation in the temperature the rocks cannot compensate that much fluctuations in temperature especially in the desert areas and deliberately the cracks we can see on the rocks <coughs> cracks we can see on the rocks of the deserts and those cracks are following those cracks are actually followed by the change in the temperature now when those cracks are occurred the carbon present in the rocks will again delivered into the atmosphere so on one hand we are having the process of how the carbon is taken from the atmosphere and on one hand we are having the process how the carbon is delivered to the atmosphere in any form now when this delivering and accepting process is balanced then the proper then there is a proper ecosystem then there is a proper balance then there is no pollution nothing but when there is human interference when industrialization urbanization then deforestation occurs at a bulk that time what happens the amount of carbon delivered is much more than the amount of carbon received now there is a imbalance and that causes global warming that causes pollution that causes several other ill effects in the nature and that day is not too far that when the amount of carbon utilized it will be much 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 more than the amount of carbon we are accepting from the nature that day is not too far that when this carbon imbalance will become a very very tough topic to deal with and it will curse the whole nature it will not only kill the organisms but also in human life it will have a great effect people's immune system will become weak people cannot sustain in the temperature properly the earth won't be a proper place for human to make its habitat as well as the other organisms will slowly extinct so these are the ill effects i hope through this video you can understand if not you can ask the doubts through comments also please go through the video properly thanks a lot